Hello everyone, I'm Typhoon here again and in this lecture we are diving into how Windows password hashes stored, uh, how they are stored, what makes some of them weak and how they can be cracked. Uh, when we talk about the desktop operation systems, uh, Windows has held its dominant position for decades with milestone versions like Windows 95, oops, Windows 95, uh, Windows 98, Windows XP, and more recently, Windows 7, Windows 10, and Windows 11. So these systems store user credentials locally, so you can log in even without a network. Now, these credentials are saved as hashes. And if we can retrieve these hashes, we can analyze um, and or attempt to crack them, right? And sometimes you don't, you don't even need to crack a hash. You can simply reuse the hash itself to authenticate. It's called pass the hash attack. But in this lecture, we will go deeper into how Windows actually stores hashes and how you can collect them for later cracking. And first, I want to uh, talk about the Landman hashes. Uh, they are a bit historical, but it is crucial to understand modern hashes. So the LAN manager, Landman, uh, is a relic from the 1980s it's so big that it has been disabled by default since windows 7 so new windows operating systems like windows 8.1 windows 10 windows 11 or even new ones will not use this system but this is crucial to understand right uh so what it's not worth mentioning uh, because you may still encounter it in a legacy systems or in an old dumps so landman had several design flaws the first it converted all letters to uppercase <laughs> reducing the complexity from 52 letters down to 26 and that's a massive reduction and makes brute force uh, far easier <laughs> because you know if our password is it doesn't matter if it's a password up with uppercase p and s or all of the lowercase it will still turn it into all uppercase english characters by default automatically and the second step was it padded passwords with nulls up to 14 characters meaning attackers know the sig signature and also it split it also split passwords into two seven character halves which destroyed the strength of longer passwords instead of one strong uh, 14 character passwords you get two weak seven character ones so if you have 14 character password is stronger than two seven character passwords of course and it used this uh, this is an outdated algorithm that is trivial to attack today so landman is effectively dead today but it is a perfect case study of how not to design password storage. So now let's uh, focus on what really matters. NT hashes uh, on modern Windows system. Now this is what you will actually work with in practice in Windows 10, Windows 11. NT hashes. So windows store password hashes in a protected file called security account manager uh, or sam database now you can find this database on c disk where the windows installed windows 
system 32 or actually let's actually yeah uh system 32 config you can see you don't currently have permission to we will get permanently get access to this folder and here we are you can see we have a sam file here let's show more options properties 64 kilobytes of sam file created in april 2024 modified in september 1 2025 however <laughs> of course you cannot simply open this file uh, while windows is running it is locked by the system and to retrieve the hashes you will need several tools you can see we cannot open it uh, we have a uh, several uh, tools uh, like more than one tool to uh, retrieve this uh, sam file which we will do in next lectures uh, pw dump or or fg dump mimi cats this is a fpw dump and fg dump is classic dumping tools mimi cats this is extremely popular for extracting hashes and credentials from memory in packet uh, provides uh, scripts to remotely dump hashes and we also have hash dump in metasploit uh, once you have a session on a target system you can do this now uh, the hashes on the windows usually uh, look like this the username rid lm hash in t hash which we have discussed and yes in modern system uh, the lm hash field will usually be blank uh, or set to the uh, particular placeholder that starts with ad or some something else right the, the important part here is the nt hash which uh, we will be targeting here nt hash is the modern windows hash format here's how it works first the user password is converted to unicode uh, preserving case and non-english characters now this increases complexity of course compared to the landman even my grandmother's password creation logic is, of course, <laughs> more stronger than the landman used in the Windows system uh, prior to Windows 7. The second is the Unicode password is hashed with MD4, MD4, MD4 producing a fixed 128-bit or 16-byte 16, 16 output. The second, uh, the third step is that the MD4 hash is stored in the SAM database and used for authentication. Now this is better than the uh, landman, but it is still flawed. Why? Because NT hashes do not use a hash, a uh, salt. Without a salt, attackers can build rainbow tables uh, which is giant pre-computed databases of hash values from common passwords and if your password is a common uh, it's in t hash is almost certainly already known now this makes cracking much faster than a brute forcing from scratch and we also have the over the network hashes uh, which basically beyond the local logins windows also authenticates users over the network using uh three main protocols ntlm version 1 ntlm version 2 and kerberos we will uh, discuss these in detail in next lectures basically the ntlm uh, version 1 is uses a challenge response mechanism uh, this first the server sends a random challenge the client encrypts it with the nt hash this nt hash and send it back and the domain controller verifies this and it also has a weakness there's no salt or additional randomness if attacker capture the challenge response they can crack it offline in practice this data is labeled as net ntlmv1 
and can be attacked directly using hashcat which we have here and uh, let's uh, come to ntlm version 2 um the ntlm version 2 improves this by adding a client challenge which is a random number from the client ntlm v2 also has a timestamp and it has the hmac md5 combining all of this with the nt hash now this makes the reply attacks harder and increases complexity but if attackers capture the full exchange the NTLM version 2 can still be cracked with enough resources. And in Hashcat, it appears as Nnet NTLM v1 or v2 in Hashcat. You can also crack this with the Hashcat if you have enough resources. And Kerberos. Kerberos. Uh, Kerberos is uh, much more modern. Instead of static hashes being re re reused constantly, Kerberos uses ticket-based authentication with time-limited tokens. Now, yes, <laughs> this makes it much stronger in practice, but still attacks like golden tickets or weak service account passwords can undermine it. So, to recap, the Landman hashers are absolute and broken, but useful as a historical lesson in a bad design. Uh, modern Windows system uses NT hashes, which are stronger but still lack salting, uh, make them vulnerable to rainbow tables. And hashes are stored in the SAM database. And you can dump them with tools uh, like uh, Impacket, Mimikatz. And over the network, Windows uses NTLM version 1, NTLM version 2, and Kerberos. NTLM version 1 is weak. NTLM version 2 is better than the NTLM version 1, obviously. And Kerberos is the strongest here, but still has attack surfaces. In the next lecture, we will move from collecting hashes to actually cracking them with a John the Ripper and a Hashcat. Thank you for watching and I'm waiting you in next lecture.